Should Christians watch The Chosen? Is it something that'll deepen your relationship with Jesus or pull you away from him? That's what we're talking about today on the To Be The Church podcast. Welcome to the To Be The Church podcast, where we explore what it looks like to truly be the church in today's culture. No Ben today. I'm Tyler Andrews here as well. How are you doing, buddy? Good, man. Thanks, Ty. You been watching any good TV shows lately? Uh... Uh, I don't know. I, let me think, dude. I, I, um, we've been through all this home renovation stuff, and we haven't. I've actually been watching a lot less TV lately than I have in a long time because our upstairs we renovated, and we had a TV in there before, and we haven't put one back in there, and we're kind of enjoying not having a TV in there. I found myself watching mm-hmm. so, so much less TV. So, the answer to that is no. I have not been watching any good TV shows mm-hmm. lately. I, I recently watched the. Mission Impossible, what is it now, like 9 or like 17? <laughs> and I'm like, it's the same movie, but I keep enjoying it every time they come out with it every four years. My wife was like, is Tom Cruise in it? And I was like, yeah. She's like, isn't he 70 or something? And I still hear he does a lot of his own stunts and stuff, which is funny. But yeah, I know it, it uh, yeah, same movie over again, but I like it. Yeah, I, uh, I don't really have, I was thinking, like I have a lot less shows right now than I normally do. That I'm just not really watching much, but then I realized that I'm also watching two hours of baseball every day. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Royal still <laughs> making it happen. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, they're doing good. They're second place right now. There you go. Um, okay, but I, I asked because this question came in, and I, reading this question, I don't think we're going to have a um, a super informed answer. Yeah. Because we, I don't think either of us have watched <laughs> this show much, but we can talk about it, um, and it also kind of lines up for for reasons that we'll get into. But here's the question from a guy named Daniel. He says, hello, new to the podcast and NGC. Wonder if you could discuss, or sorry, wonder if the guys could discuss their thoughts on the show, The Chosen. I've really enjoyed it so far. If they've already discussed it, please let me know what episode. I think we might have actually like talked about it for five minutes or something Mm -hmm. like that on another episode. But um, what is your uh, level of exposure to The Chosen? On a scale of one to 10, one being none, 10 being I watch every moment of it. I am a zero. <laughs> Less okay. than none. Yeah. Is that out of principle or you just haven't watched it? No, I just haven't watched it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have had 97 Facebook messages in the last few years of being like, have you seen The Chosen? Mm-hmm. And to Which makes me want to not watch it even more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of a late adopter, dude, that like on stuff like that, that I, I'll get around to like something that was a cultural trend like five years after the fact and be like, oh, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. But no, that's not one I've been into. Yeah. Um, so the, the creators of The Chosen, I guess, are members of a church that's in our network. Mm. And uh, there was something recently where they got like brought up and like they were like, happy anniversary, X29 or whatever. Oh, interesting. And like people in the room were like, oh, <gasps> Uh, and I was like, who is that? You know, because, um, uh, yeah, I didn't yeah, I didn't recognize. Now that I think of it, a buddy of mine uh, does some writing for them. Uh, uh, yeah, so anyway, but that, but again, I know nothing really about the show. It's yeah. something about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I literally am saying that because I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, okay, Do so. You, you, what's your level, one to ten exposure? Um, two and a half. Okay. Because, I'll say it that way, because um, my wife watches it. Oh, okay. And she doesn't watch things without trying to tell me everything about it. (laughs) (laughs) So you're maybe like a four and a half. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, my parents have watched it, I think, or at least my mom has. And that that was me a few years ago where my mom's like, you have to watch this. Okay. Um, And I, yeah, I haven't. And so, but I haven't watched, I've watched one episode. Like recently I sat down and um, like my wife and my oldest daughter were watching an episode and I sat down and sat like in the room and watched a little bit of it. Okay. Um, But... uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of thoughts on it, um, obviously. <laughs> uh, but th- the conversation that, that could be had is there's there's multiple sides of it. And so, and these are conversations that I've heard and, um, and witnessed um, when it comes to a show like The Chosen. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so one thing off the bat is that people who are for it um, and, and fans of it aren't going to be this way, but people who are against it for whatever reason, they always look for like, connections that like are unbiblical where it's like this actor was also in this sex scene or, um, or like they've gotten funding from this organization that is so ecumenical that like they're, you know, actually supporting things that we don't believe in. So, um, so that, that just, just to be said, like people who are against it will look for those things. And Mm -hmm. if you look for those things, I think you can find it. I think that they've gotten some funding from, I don't know who, but like some organizations where you're like, oh, 
that's not Christian, you know? And sure. so like, what, what's their motive there? Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, and I, I don't know the creators of the show. Like, I don't even know what their names are, Yeah. but, um, you know, like I've watched, I think one interview where they were talking about like, we just want people to know the stories of the Bible and know Jesus better. Um, okay. So, so, so in that, when you were saying the first, the thing that unbiblical, I, I thought you were going to go with like that it dramatizes. So does it dramatizes gospel uh, uh, narratives or, or something? Is that what it, is that sort of the premise of the show? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, and so with that, like they tell like the they tell the, s- the stories of the Bible. So like there's the um, I think it's the first episode overall, um, and I could be wrong because <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. uninformed, but is like the story of Mary Magdalene, and uh, so it's like where like where the Bible gives us four verses or five verses or paragraph, like it's 40 minutes of like her backstory. Okay. And, you know, and so it's like... It's like a prequel. Yeah, but it's like, it's trying to like give some context for Do they like, cite any other extra biblical sources in their in the creation uh, of it? I don't know. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But like, so, I mean, it's like she's drunk at a bar. Sure. And, you know, like, uh, you know, and towards the end of the episode, Jesus meets her and, you know, yeah. and then... Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of extra stuff. So it's like, like I think one of the disciples is kind of like has Asperger's, <laughs> um, <laughs> like you know, like and rather undiagnosed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah. So there, there's like all this added stuff where sure. it's like context and like, but it, it is for 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 some that I've talked to, it's like, yeah. oh, this like really brings to life, you know. And actually, Ben and I had a, an episode maybe last week, where we were like, it's kind of weird where like the Bible gives one sentence on something, but like that would be life-changing, you know, where mm-hmm. um, like... I yeah, mean, I remember you were talking about the the guys raising from the dead when when, um, oh, when Luke, Jesus yeah. died on the cross. Right, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, and so... Bodies getting up. Right, and so that and different things like it. And so, um, but yeah, here, here's where our conversation can be as two people who haven't watched much of the show is, um, so on one end of the spectrum, you have people who, and I think this is the desire of the show, um, people who uh, like love Jesus or are getting to know Jesus and have the opportunity through this to like engage the gospel story in a way that's super approachable and um, can in some ways deepen your love for Jesus mm-hmm. and who he is. Okay, so that's one, one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum, uh, and I, I have some friends who feel this way about the show, uh, they would say that it is unhelpful and actually harmful harmful for Christians to watch that show because it gives them a picture of Jesus that is not who Jesus actually is. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it gives them a, uh, like, so like what somebody said um, was like, when you're praying and you're thanking God for what Jesus has done, like, are you picturing that actor yeah. um, who's a, a random dude in the 21st century, mm-hmm. right? Um, is that the face of the Savior that you have? And mm. in that, they, they claimed that that is a form of idolatry. Okay. Um, now, I'm not saying I believe that. I'm just saying the two ends of the spectrum. Right? Does that apply to the Passion of the Christ? I mean, it would, right? Mel Gibson's movie? Yeah, it would have to, right? Okay. Um, and so that would be the same the same idea. Because I was going to say, um, I picture Jim Caviezel. When I pray, <laughs> but just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I was like searching for the names. So I can make a joke, but you beat me to it. Um, uh, yeah. Um, oh, well, so where do we land? Wait, right? well, hold on real yeah. quick. Just funny, funny story. Um, Jim Caviezel's in, he's in the Count of Monte Cristo. He's in yeah. Passion. He's in something more recent. And it was on, and I think it was my brother was like, <laughs> Jesus is solving crimes now? <laughs> Yeah, there was a whole show that was like five seasons long that he was, I can't remember what it was called, but yeah, I know the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's anyway, funny. sorry, yeah. Um, so as as someone who, and again, like one, if you watched all three seasons or four seasons, whatever there are now, like of this, like you could, you could go through and be like, I think this is too extra biblical. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. I think this is like going too far, but we can't do that because we haven't watched it. And so just on a basic level, like what are your thoughts? Yeah, knowing that there are people in our church who are loving it and watching it, and knowing there are people in our church who are on that other end of the spectrum. Yeah, as well. and so and that's our goal and to be the church is to irritate one side at least, <laughs> or maybe both. Um, so, <laughs> so thread that needle so that everyone's mad. Um, no, so 
I, yeah, I have a number of thoughts. So, so, so yeah, I, I think for the sake of consistency, if, if you're making the argument that the chosen can lead you to idolatry and picturing, you know, an actor or or whatever, to be consistent, you'd need to probably apply that to the Passion of the Christ or or, or other things that dramatize it. Paintings, even uh, maybe, yeah, yeah. And and dude, we could go into the whole like icon and iconoclast controversies throughout the history of the church and and what you know. What, what over the centuries that has been with the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Reformation and all those sorts of things. So, and we won't go all there, but, but this is not a new controversy, this type of stuff for sure. And so art, yes, and you bring up paintings, sculptures, these sorts of things, the, the, the Netflix bingeable TV show 500 years ago was, you know, or 400 years, was the Sistine Chapel or the you know, the David statue or, or that was the, the art forms of their day, um, were, were putting, um, paint and, and, uh, and you could even say in some sense music and those different types of things. Now, now a visual medium, like, like television, right. Or, or those things is, it's a different medium. Right. And so I, and I, again, I don't even, I feel like I'm going in lots of different areas if we go down that road. But dude, another thing that comes to mind is the Ten Commandments. Okay. And that's been remade, but the old Charlton Heston one, we watched that the other day with our girls. And um in the beginning of that, they they cite their sources. That's why I asked about the chosen thing, sources cited, you know, because there is extra biblical uh historical stuff that you can cite from certain periods that as a believer, you wouldn't take that on par with the veracity of the scriptures, but you'd go, okay, that could be helpful context. And for the Moses story with Josephus and other you know, early uh, Jewish historians and others, you have some extra biblical stuff that sort of adds uh, some texture to the biblical account. And they, they say that, and of course, this is made in the 1950s or whatever, Charlton Heston and they say that out front. They have like a, vi- a visual screen that comes up in the in the kind of prologue to the movie um, that that cites where they found this stuff, the biblical account, Josephus. They name the historians or whatever. Um, and so, you know, I think, and obviously nowadays you've had the Noah story with Russell Crowe, and I'll admit, beyond Charlton Heston, the Ten Commandments and the Passion of the Christ, I, I tend to stay away and have stayed away from most of those. Those movies that or movies or shows that sort of dramatize the biblical accounts, and the reason I stay away, from, I, I I don't know why. Like I think there's some sense to like if I'm watching an entertainment show, um, I'm doing so to relax and kind of disconnect from what I do for a living, and that would be impossible for me as I'm watching something like The Chosen, yeah, because it's like that you know, preaching, knowing these narratives inside and out. It's like I would just be thinking about like and. I'd be irritated at sometimes because I'd be like, yeah, the text doesn't say that. Oh, what the heck? You know, and, and I'd be, you know, so I don't think I can't, that's not entertaining for me. That's not, you know, and then at the same time, I'm like, well, could I watch it for the sake of like, you know, studying it and then having a really strong take right now? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> like, I don't know. I got other things. I'm like prepping for Sunday. So, so I think that like that, that, and that's just on a personal level, what I do there. Now, if I, if I felt like this came to the level of like, are people, pastorally need to know exactly what to think about episode seven, you know, and I just, I, that's not, I don't feel like, so I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. I do think, I do think on the side of it that would say this could lead to sort of a, an idolatrous like picture of Jesus that isn't Jesus. I would think the believers who are, who, who are into it would need to hold to the text of scripture more tightly than they do to the dramatization of that. And I say this also to preachers who are preaching gospel narratives. It's like, dude, don't, when you start to in your gospel narrative preaching, when you start to be like, well, it doesn't say this, but you can imagine dot, 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 right? And you start to fill out all this extra biblical stuff. You're actually not letting the text talk. You're, you're, you're reading your own, preferences and 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 culture and those things back into the text so you got to be you got to be really careful about that but um yeah and so and so for the people that dude i don't know god's sovereign in it all that, that's probably a big one for me in it that i just go you know like he's gonna save his people and there will there there will and maybe are those people that get 
that that becomes a gateway to them to like wanting to know who Jesus is and they actually connect with the church, they hear the gospel preached or they, they get into the word for themselves. And, um, and, and so that could be a good thing evangelistically. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, that's a long non-answer, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> we are all now dumber for what I just said. But anyway, so that's kind of where I land on it that, you know, I think, I think we can get too hot or cold one or the other on these things sometimes. And it's probably more of a non-issue, but yeah, I I think somebody should ask the question like what is this like what is this forming in me? Yeah. Right? And if if the answer is it is making me love Jesus more and like dig into the scriptures more, then awesome. Praise God. Um for me, like and you were saying I kind of don't watch these things. I don't watch a lot of these things because it brings out a cynicism in me that is like like even like th- there was a Noah movie recently. Oh yeah. That's like Russell not, Crow. Yeah, not made by Christians, not made for Christians, but dramatizes that account and is just ridiculous. Like, and so sometimes I look at Christian media and I'm like, oh, this is so cheesy. And sometimes I look at things like Noah and I'm like, oh, this is just so wrong. Yeah. That it's like it's not good for yeah. me. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's just not not you know, helpful for your right. soul. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and so yeah, like uh, ask yourself like, what is this doing for me? If you find yourself like in your prayer time, like fantasizing like about whatever the actor's name is that plays Jesus or whatever, you know, maybe like, skip that week's episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm using the word fantasize in a very general <laughs> sense. <laughs> Where uh, is this going? Tyler? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it is a matter of conscience. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's under one of those, there you go. That, that category. It's probably could have been a 30 second podcast yeah. matter of conscience. Well, and, as, we're, as but, we're talking about, I'm Googling it yeah. and there's all sorts of opinions out there like Piper, did a whole thing on should Johnny. We, what Johnny should say? we dramatize Jesus' life for television? Yeah, what did he say? Um, he, I, I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so he had like, first off, he gave some safeguards against distortion, against distorting scripture, or replacing it, not adding to it, um, making sure it's uh, clearly imaginative and consistent with scripture and focused on scripture. And then he does uh, like um, give some biblical warrant, like the Bible uses imaginative language, and then. Um, like calls us to do the same at times, uh, imaginative action. Um, like there's acted out dramas of biblical reality. Jeremiah was told to make yoke bars and walk around with this heavy yoke on his shoulders and kind of goes on there. Yeah. But then he also calls us to pursue reality. Um, and so he says, like my conclusion is that if we pause and ponder why the Bible itself employs so many imaginative means of explaining and illustrating and representing reality, we'll see that the Bible itself, number one, offers a, us examples of truth clarifying, truth-intensifying drama. It encourages us to use language this way and protects us against distorting or replacing Scripture. Yeah. So, See, and um, that's the thing, is that the area Piper's in now where he's not preaching weekly anymore, and he can like get in there and provide something like that for the church. It's a great phase of life for him, and that's why I say we should probably attach that to our show notes, that article from Piper. Um, and I, I was joking a little bit when I'm like, I disagree with him, whatever, but I've just found Piper to be quite consistent and, and thoughtful on things like this, uh, and, and, and offer pretty good pastoral takes on, on stuff like this. And so, um, you know, and he seems to give a pretty fair reading front to, to all the different sides, even those he, he doesn't agree with. And so I, 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 I know him to be quite a thoughtful person in that regard. So I think, um, that that's probably some good advice there. And, and I would, I would probably echo a lot of that, that, that you said there, but I also uh, found by looking at articles is that Matthew does have Asperger's in the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. We, I was wondering which one, um, <laughs> he was a tax collector. And so it, it, with Asperger's, it's kind of that focus. He can yeah, go good, good with numbers. Yeah. The numbers. I guess. Uh, well, there you go. Well, anyway, yeah, the text doesn't say that, so that is demonic. Um, so, so no, that that's good, dude. And I think at the end of the day, too, the matter of conscience is a big one, but also the connection in community, dude. I think if you if you are a, a, a this is an oxymoron, but if you are a, a an unconnected Christian, like you're not connected to the body, right? That you're that you're somebody who, and I don't mean just like in a moment where you've you've left a church or you've moved to an area. I mean if you're like a, a, a self proclaimed Christian who does not, who is not rooted in the local community of Christ around you in, 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 in a Bible believing church that's proclaiming the gospel and these things. If, if you're unconnected and, and you're, and I, and I do think, I think spirituality and Christianity in America can be somebody's little niche thing where it's their, their own, 
Um, and they just kind of dictate it themselves and they partake of the chosen stuff or just different things. And they're not connected to community. That's not a safe place to be. So, so, um, watching this show or not watching this show is, is not going to be the primary determining factor for you on the health and vitality of your walk with Christ being in being in the local community, in a local faith community that you're rooted in, that you're a, you're a part of that body, that you're known, um, that you're connected to, and and sitting under the word and and having qualified leadership in that place that's that's biblically rooted and grounded. That that is going to be the determining factor. So these types of things, and that's why I think sometimes I I can be maybe overly dismissive of these kind of controversies because I'm like, dude, there's a lot of stuff in scripture of like for us as Christians of the way that it works, right? You're, you're, you're part of the body, you're, you know, you're submitted to the word and qualified leaders and all those things. And so I think if that's, if you're there, you're, you're probably going to be okay, you know, and, and the Lord's going to work it out in those things. And so um, I think that's probably more, more important than, than, you know, the conscience issue of, of whether or not you're watching the show. So, yeah. All right. Well, anyway. um, send in more questions about shows that we haven't watched <laughs> and we'll talk about them next week's episodes on the sopranos so i'm just kidding but uh all right well send in questions uh podcast to be the church.com in the youtube comments on social media at to be the church have a great week